live from the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida. It's the Q covering Splunk.com 2016. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. And welcome back here on theCUBE. We are live in Orlando, Florida here at DonCoff 2016 uh, with Splunk, with uh, its community, with its users, customers, vendors. Uh, just a huge uh, congregation of Splunk energy that we've been bringing you here for the past couple of days along with John Furrier. I'm John Walls, and it's time for us to go back to school, John. Yep. Um, you know, we're going on campus at Rice University and Indiana University, respectively. Albert Ball, who's a security analyst at uh, Rice. Albert, thank you for joining us here. Thank you for having us. Good to have you. And Alan Tucker, who's the manager of the HelpNet Central Systems That's at true. IU. Yep. And a, and a CUBE alum. A CUBE alum, right? yeah. Right, yeah. second Let's time around. Last year, yeah. 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 All right, um, first off, you know, a couple of universities here. What are you guys doing here? Uh, how does Splunk interface with what you're doing at Rice and at IU? Why don't you, Albert, if you would lead off. Uh, we're doing, what brought us here this year is we were able to have an offering to talk about what we've been able to use Splunk for, and it was intelligent, driven, uh, dynamic block lists, so that gave us an opportunity to come here. And Splunk has actually replaced some, of old, some older ways of doing things, like our log, um, correlation processes for other aspects of it, and also replaced our S, our SIM product, essentially. So we're maturing through that process right now. That's right. And Alan? Yeah, so um, both uh, members of my team are speaking today, and um, actually both went fantastically. So um, we're just spending the time trying to soak in new, uh, new ideas, yeah. as well as um, really focus on trying to um, you know, develop what we've already put out there. Right. And, and so when you say new ideas, I mean, is, is there something on the, like the near horizons, an area in which that you're really looking at for either whether it's improvement or whether it's speed, efficiency, whatever it is, you said, okay, yeah, we can, we can tweak this a little bit um, as far as your, your operation back in Bloomington's concerned. Yeah, so um, probably one of the biggest things is uh, behavior analytics and, and um, machine uh, learning. So we have a, 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 a offering right now that's basically just an app that allows our users to, um, to look at a dashboard and see user logins and uh, file logins and things like that and being able to identify those and somewhat predict um, outliers and things like that, that's incredibly important for us because it, it will save our users more time uh, you know, every single day. Right, it's all about time too, right? I mean, yeah, yeah so how, do, how do you guys deal with the whole university, because they're very hardcore about the data, mm -hmm. different departments, um, in cloud, multi-tenancy is a huge challenge. Correct. What is the uh, strategy with Splunk? How do you guys make that happen? Is, yeah, so we actually, um, one of my team members, that's exactly what they talked about, multi-tenant environment and how, how to get it done. Um, there are a lot of different layers. There's app layer security, there's index layer security, um, it, you know, user access controls. So that, uh, it, it's a hard nut to crack, but there is a, a great way to do it, so if you can go and download that, you know, the the, the But the Splunk talk. support that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what's the yeah. main use case? As uh, universities look at, we just had Arizona State on, he's taking a different strategy, Correct. come in, well, a different strategy than most corporations, brings it to a safe zone, doesn't really touch, you know, corporate security or the, uh, the security groups, and then he just ingratiates into other groups. How do you guys uh, roll out and deploy Splunk in your universities? So, we always start, um, Siloed. <laughs> we have siloed, <laughs> siloed data because that we're we're very privacy conscious, and um, to, you know to to bring someone new, a new group in, the assumption there is that most likely they don't want their data shared with everybody uh, in in that environment, especially when you when you talk about the security team and things like that. Um, but once it's in there and we can start to have discussions from unit to unit about um, you know, cross-pollination of data and, and uh, correlation of data, then we, we breach that, broach that subject. Well, you them. build that architecture later. So yes, you absolutely. your strategy is let's go serve the units or groups right. individually. Yes, yeah. Um, silo, you, silo dirty it, word, but it's, uh, I know yeah. what you mean. Right. Individually, have yeah. their own Splunk. Because mm -hmm. people get jealous, right? I want my own Splunk. You don't want their Splunk either. Yeah, not we're jealous or paranoid or whatever you call it. Yeah, we're we're definitely not in the um, 
everybody has their own instance yeah. scenario. It, you know, so we're trying to share costs and trying to share the infrastructure. But you carve them out though. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. And Rice? You know, we've worked with different departments right now with, within IT to actually leverage our top 20 goals that we're trying to do. One of them's like inventory. So we've worked with another department right now and helped mature the relationship there on what they expect from the Splunk instance and what we would like to gain from it. It's because it's ultimately a good idea to have an inventory of what's out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, it gets around the privacy part because it is their data. They are controlling their data, but we're also able to show them different ways to see their data because the tool that they might be using with it might not be flexible enough to show them what they need to see, or the reporting mechanism going into a trouble ticket system, the glueware there isn't working, and Splunk is providing that, that mechanism to glue between so the two. you guys got to be proactive going in to security. Can you just expand on these security layers that Splunk offers? and some of the best practices that you guys use around data isolation? So, I, I won't say that I'm the guy. Um, <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know if you want to expand yeah. on that. So, so, we've been able, at least from different layer perspectives, we've been able to do certain niche cases right now because our model, our Splunk instance right now is about two years of age, it's growing on three. So, I would say ours is just above immaturity stage. But as we go through it, we're able to do certain things like blocking attackers. Uh, dynamically, uh, repeat offenders approaches. We're able to also take care of our DCM violations uh, almost without even touching the email now anymore, which is a big offloading right there because it happens. So you have people that make claims and you have to chase down if the person exists or not and however the, whatever the university policy dictates on how that needs to be done. Great. What are some of the things about this show this year that get you guys excited? You see the keynote, it's got the keynote tomorrow. It's going to be much more of a fuzzy art of the possible, which really taps the creative side of how Splunk, what you can do with Splunk, so I get that's in the last day, but first two days, core updates, today's IT operations, big walkaways for you guys, big, big uh, thoughts and from, to this weird show. Specific to, to Indiana, it, it, the licensing changes were, are going to be pretty big for us. Um, to be able to spin up test and, and dev environments mm -hmm. under, what was it, 50 gig? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's, that's really big. For us, that means that we don't have to um, go against our production license if someone just wants to try something out. And um, we can actually pull them into test and dev and develop, even develop a full app. Um, but know exactly how much data they're going to ingest, and then once we know that that data, that true number, then we can roll them into production. That'll accelerate more use, right? Yeah, Probably absolutely. Most, most likely. Absolutely. Right, because it's some, some buffer. Some yeah, buffer. Yeah, because we don't have to do work on that production side. We can throw that in a VM and just play with it in a VM and destroy it, and then move the programming yeah. from there to actually the, the online. Get a feel for what's going on. Benchmark yes, it out. Understand yeah. the scope. Yes, sir. And so, Alan, I mean, HelpNet, I mean, maybe, maybe I didn't set the stage quite right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what's involved within HelpNet? I mean, what, you know, what your, sure. your slices so, are, so we understand exactly who your clients are, who you're serving, and, and, and how you're serving them. Yeah, so HelpNet within um, the overall IT organization within IU is in the support division, and what we do is we actually provide end user support, systems administration, and web development. Um, to over 60 different departments throughout IU. Okay. So one of, those, um, one of those pieces is that we spin up services that are helpful to the IU community. Um, and so we implemented Splunk to uh, basically start to help people with IT compliance. And that's, that's really the crux of where we started and why we started. Okay, and then there was, there was uh... There was some discussion on in the first day keynote, yesterday's keynote, about licensing and about you know the test dev environment having you know free or at least some latitude, a little more latitude on that. I mean, how attractive? You're starting to touch on that a little bit. How attractive is that to you all? That first off, there's training available, and then there's also kind of this um, green space or, or you know greenfield area to experiment a little bit and and uh, play around and, and get an idea of what those controls are like. Yeah, I think that that's that uh, all of those um, uh, all of those models help us, and especially in a, in a university scenario where um, you know procurement of new licensing is a long process. Yes. So um, being able to have a little once again wiggle room there is is really beneficial to us. Yeah. Uh, the, something 
the company does, which is really nice, is bring out people to do Splunk search parties. And that has actually been a really helpful to bring out new ideas, expose Splunk to different departments to see what it can do. And that's actually starting to foster more conversations with different pieces of my university that we're able to take advantage of. And it starts bringing in the growth of the product, but also with the capabilities of it and how we're going to interact with that part of it. But with the offering with the test case, we're able to, I see us probably using that for other departments to, to, for their testing part. Mm -hmm. But not only that, um, it, we'll wind up actually being able to try out some things that we didn't, weren't able to, different apps possibly, or mm -hmm. different pieces of um, like the security offering, user analytics, we could probably throw that in there, give it a try, and then show management exactly what could be done there on that side of it. And the future that you guys need, talk about what you guys are looking for. As you guys set this foundation, you're getting down in the trenches, obviously the test dev thing, we can imagine the hassles just procuring licenses, production, it's a nightmare in the uh, federal government and or EDU is always hard, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, just sir. like yeah. certification. So that's cool. As this progresses, how do you see it unfolding in, in, uh, in the education? Because there's a ton of data, there's a lot of work being done, you have a lot of faculty, you have some network stuff, and everything's going on. You're like a full-on networking yourself, so it's not like it's a trivial backbone of any kind. It's like you right. have all the needs of an enterprise. Yeah, I think that you would find that a lot of universities, and maybe, I don't want to speak for, <laughs> for you, Albert, but um, you know, a lot of universities' IT is distributed and, and siloed, and that even goes for generally the, uh, the, the enterprise IT organization, the umbrella organization, and being able to take all of those and start pushing data into a single consolidated um, it's, you know, front end or dashboard or whatever it is, that's, that's a new thing. I, right. I, that really, um, has, has changed the game in a higher ed landscape. How about sharing data? Is there a trend on sharing data? And you mentioned that they're all silo. I get that, makes sense, given the environment. Is there movement on sharing or is it still parochial? Oh, I got my, my data. I think there's movement on sharing. I think it's, it's more um, not out of the box. We don't want to share it right, right away yeah. or by default, but if we decide that it's a strategic a movement. A little meeting, huddle up. Yeah, right. Collaboration. Right. Absolutely, and it, it, if it's valuable to both teams, I think that it, it absolutely makes sense to go that, that direction. Yeah. yeah. So we, the, one of the ways that we're looking at sharing the least data is through that inventory process. Once we find out who the owner is of the device, being able to take flow data, some other security metric data from uh, either the firewalls or the uh, IPSs and actually being able to give at least the network, uh, the system administrator a view of what that particular box is looking at. We're also taking in our uh, scan data for our vulnerability assessments. So we're looking at being able to have that system administrator have a one-stop shopping, at least seeing what's happening to that host from an external view and at least give them something to work with on where they need to shore up the system. Yeah, we had a big, um, a big use case probably about six months ago about PCI compliance, and that was a prime example that, that mm -hmm. prior to Splunk, um, there were, really was no place that, that um, you know, networking data, all of the firewalling and, and switching, as well as the server uh, Active Directory, there was nowhere that they could push all of those logs into a consolidated format where the, to meet that compliance need. So, so that was a really, really, actually fairly quick win for us, you know. A little hanging fruit. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much. Absolutely. Because all of it's right there. Well, and that yeah. also gets people trained on the fact that you start storing the data, then it gets people kind of ginned up on the idea of, hey, why don't we just do this more often? Yeah, Not I think just for compliance reasons. Right, I think that there's, you know, just getting the name out <laughs> is, <laughs> is part of the job. You know, I always feel like I'm trying to sell Splunk to my own uh, <laughs> university, but. I know, you uh, guys are the best Splunk salespeople. That's why they have you on theCUBE, because it better that the customers are talking. Albert, I want to get your take, because I asked, I asked him the question last year. There's, uh, there's BS, and then there's, there's that's BS is before Splunk. Okay, before Not Splunk. Not BS. Okay. <laughs> right. Bachelor of Science. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 There are a few BS's out there. Right. 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 Shooting the BS here. Warners. The BS. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about before Splunk and after Splunk. So BS, AS. Before Splunk, that's a great example how a lot of manual stuff going on, compliance, low hanging fruit, quick win, that's like a single, knock that down, you get some momentum. Can you share 
what was before Splunk and what you, when you brought Splunk in, <laughs> what was it like? And you not give me some uh, <laughs> anecdotal examples. So before Splunk but was don't a whole, BS me. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. Before Splunk was a whole lot of pearl strips mm. and uh, a whole lot of grepping. After Splunk, we've actually been able to automate a lot of reporting mechanisms. Um, controls moving within certain systems, and also uh, the response time on that particular search, uh, searching engines that we're actually been working with. Before a Perl script would have to log into five different computers, it would have to run the script, it would have to find the data, and maybe, maybe in two and a half hours, you, you had your answer. Maybe. 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 Yeah, and a lot yeah. of sweat too. A yeah, lot of sweat yeah. equity in there. Well, hit it, go back, go grab a cup of coffee, go work on something else. Yeah. yeah. And it, now it, it, it's it's automated. So you just bring, you look up your dashboard, you see it there, and you've got your answer already. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> um, now, the future of cloud is that part of your equation at all? Cloud on premise? Can you share how Splunk fits into that? Are you guys using Splunk in the cloud capacity? On-prem only? Yeah, so right, right now I use only on-prem. Um, I'm starting to look at, at cloud as an option. Um, it, it, I think, so higher ed, I, ha I have a very strong opinion about uh, cloud and higher ed. Yeah, we talked about this last it, year. Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that higher ed is the slowest uh, adopter to cloud that you will ever see, but um, I think the, the strategy there is put things in cloud where it makes sense and what is um, sort of a safe. Test and dev would be great for cloud, wouldn't it? What's that? Test and dev? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely it would be. Um, or, or even, you know, sort of small sets of data, whatever it is, it, but making those decisions and actually saying, you know, okay, this might make sense to move there. Um, you know, put it, in, put it on prem first and then start to think, okay, what, what makes sense to move or not. All right, so you're back to Indiana, you're back to Texas. Uh, briefly, your takeaways. What are you going to take back with you to your respective communities? You first. Oh, <laughs> man. I, you first. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think a lot of what I'm going to take back is actually just contacts with other people. Um, being able to, to network with everyone has been fantastic this year. Um, a, a, yes. the, the higher ed community is a close-knit one, obviously, so um, that's, that's probably been the, the most valuable thing, being able to see uh, people like Albert you know, once yes. a year and, and, and touch base with them, yep. see what their pitfalls have been within the last year and what they've had really good success with. You guys with. do a lot of sharing here with Absolutely. other higher eds. So. Yeah, yeah we, we're, we're not selling anything. The kindred spirits, you're growing. <laughs> right. oh, it's going to yeah. be a growing right. Right. Well, Sometimes he'll have the same problem I will, or Absolutely. I might have already gone through the problem, and then he just comes, uh, we yeah. exchange the information and lessons learned. Right. And it's just part of how the, the process is. Oh, it's good to be in the same boat. Uh, it is. It's, it is. It, yep. Yeah, it's yep. nice to not have to worry about the bottom line of holding trade secrets and not sharing anything. And, right. and thanks for sharing with, with us about BS, too. We appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> before Splunk. Before Splunk. Before, 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 before. <laughs> Back with more uh, after this break uh, from DotConf 2016.